I am Niall from Birdwatch Ireland and I love birds. Uh, I have been watching birds since I was two years old and it has allowed me to get a lot of enjoyment in life and an understanding of nature I wouldn't have had otherwise. So we're going to start with the basics. What is a bird? What makes it a bird? What is it about birds that are different from all other animals? What's unique? Is it that they can fly? Birds can fly, right? Well, most birds can fly, but so do lots of other things. Insects fly, butterflies and bees. Bats fly. So there's nothing unique about birds flying. And of course, quite a few birds don't fly. Like these penguins. Here in Europe, all of our birds fly. But in some parts, particularly of the southern hemisphere, and on some islands, some birds don't. So that's not so special. We know birds lay eggs. They don't, they don't give birth to live babies. They lay an egg, they keep the egg warm, and after a few weeks, days or weeks, the chick hatches out. And true, all birds lay eggs. All the female birds lay eggs, not the males. But lots of other things lay eggs too. Butterflies again, frogs. So animals were laying eggs long before there were any birds. It's been, eggs have been laid by animals for hundreds of millions of years. Okay, well, is it where they lay their eggs? Building a nest, is that something that's unique about birds? So this is a typical nest of a bird called a, a song thrush. It's made of sticks, like a basket, and they put mud inside to keep it warm and protected. But other animals build nests too. Squirrels build nests. Wasps build nests. So it's not unique to birds. And of course, some birds don't build nests at all. Can anyone say, tell me a, a bird in your country that does not build a nest? Yep, the cuckoo. Of course, the cuckoo does not build a nest the female lays her eggs in the nest of another bird. Their ancestors presumably lay, uh, built nests once, but they evolved a different strategy. Also, some birds that, look, that uh, incubate their own eggs don't build nests either. So falcons don't build a nest, they use the nest of another species. Some seabirds just lay their eggs on rock with no nest at all. So it's not unique. What about beaks? Now beaks are very important to birds. And as you will see in the next few days, each bird has a different type of beak that tells us how it lives and what food it eats. So this bird is called a curlew, a very long curved beak for sticking in the ground, in the mud or the sand, to find worms and small animals. Other beaks crush seeds or tear meat or catch flies, so many different beaks. And it's almost unique to birds, but not quite. There are some other animals that have beaks. The duck-billed platypus from Australia. It has a beak. It also lays eggs. It's one of only three mammals today that lay eggs. Originally, all mammals laid eggs. We have the hawks-billed turtle. The turtles have beaks too. Also, octopus. Squid, they have beaks. So that's not unique to birds. Although all birds do have beaks. 
In the beaks, birds have no teeth anymore. Early birds had teeth, but their teeth with a jaw, very heavy. So birds evolved light beaks with no teeth. Now, the thing that's unique about birds is they're the only animal that has feathers. No other animal alive today on Earth has feathers. But birds were not the first animals that have feathers. What were? Anyone know what first had feathers? Where feathers came from? It was dinosaurs. We know now that many dinosaurs had feathers. Feathers came before flight. So feathers did not evolve to help birds fly. That was a lucky accident. We think it was to keep them, keep them warm and for display. They were very colorful and many birds today are very colorful. And really, birds are dinosaurs. Dinosaurs did not die out. They did not go extinct. They live in our gardens. They're flying outside the windows. The birds we know today are direct descendants of dinosaurs. And they kept their feathers. Feathers are made of protein. It's the same, same protein called keratin that makes up our, our fingernails and our hair. If you have hair, it makes up the, the hair. So that's, we've seen feathers are unique about birds today. What other key features do they have? Well, what's particularly notable or interesting about them? This bird here, by the way, is called a coal tit. We will see them um, um, around, I hope. OK. As we've said, all birds have feathers, number one. All birds are warm-blooded. Most dinosaurs were warm-blooded as well. We think of reptiles as being cold-blooded, but many dinosaurs were warm-blooded, and the ancestors of our birds were warm-blooded dinosaurs. Birds have much higher body temperature than we do. If you touch a bird's skin under its feathers, it feels very hot to us. All birds have wings. Most use them to fly. Some use them to swim. So penguins again, they use them to swim underwater. Some birds, the wings do nothing. So the best example is the kiwi from Australia, or from New Zealand, sorry, not Australia, New Zealand. Its wings are so small that you can't see them. They're hidden inside the body almost, and they do nothing. And of course, it is flightless. It behaves like a, almost like a, a mammal on the ground. As we've seen as well, all birds have beaks. So the jaws are gone the, the, with, with the teeth in them. And instead, birds, many have, they swallow stones in near to their stomachs. So they swallow food whole and the stones crush it. And that means that the weight is not in the front of their body, but in the middle of their body, which is better for flying. And all birds lay hard-shelled eggs. So hard shell is important. Most reptile eggs are soft. The, the shell feels like, like leather. Many insect eggs are very soft. Frog eggs are like jelly. Birds have protective hard shell that is very hard. The chicks inside the eggs can breathe through the shell. So the eggs are waterproof, but air goes in and out. And they're very strong. And they're made of calcium carbonate. Birds have been around for millions and millions of years, at least 70 million years. And in that time, they've developed many different shapes and sizes. You know this one? In English, it's the blue tit. Fluffy, small, very intelligent as well. This is a wading bird, very different shape because it has a very different life. Long legs, long beak, walks through water and mud. The other bird, the blue tit, it uses its beak to get caterpillars from leaves. 
It doesn't need to walk in water. It doesn't need a long beak. If birds of prey, this is a kestrel, a common falcon in all European countries. Hooked beak for tearing meat. Strong claws for grabbing. And this bird hovers. It can fly in one place without moving. It flaps its wings. It stays in one place. And it hunts mice. This bird, it's called a black guillemot, it's a seabird. So it's not in the water here. But you see the way its body shape is. It lives in the water. So its feet are at the back of its body. If you think of a boat, the propeller and the rudder for moving and steering on a boat are at the back because that is the most efficient way to move in water. It means on land, these birds have difficulty walking. They have to stand very upright and when they sit, they lie on the, their bellies on the ground. So that body is for the water. Some birds have crazy feathers on their heads, like this lapwing. We'll be talking a lot about lapwings in the next few days. It's a farmland bird that's in all our countries, or most of our countries, and is, is endangered now. The crest on the head is for display. Many, many feathers and body shapes aren't for survival. They're for impressing a mate. And sometimes evolution goes a bit crazy. If you think of the peacock with the huge tail, which means it can't fly very well. It makes life harder, but it's what the female peacock wants. Some birds are designed for migration. This is a tern. They fly thousands of kilometers every year, and they've evolved very long wings. In general, the longer a bird's wings are, the more time it spends flying and the further it travels. This bird also is evolved for life at sea. They dive into the sea to catch fish in the surface. But although this bird is a seabird, it cannot swim. So it dives into the water and immediately out or it will drown. It also has forked tail, two, like a V in the tail with long streamers. That allows it to turn quickly. The swallow is the same. Forked tail for turning quickly. You can see them do it outside over the grass. This is a duck, a teal, a small duck. It has a flat, wide beak for dabbling in mud. Does that with its beak to filter little, little animals. Also, it has evolved lots of fat. You know when you cook a duck, lots of fat? That makes it float in the water. So this bird cannot dive below the surface. It stays on top of the water. And the fat keeps it warm in very cold weather. Some birds have long necks. It helps them to hunt. So this is an egret, a little egret in the heron family. Think of cranes, think of storks, birds like that. Long legs, long necks, long beaks. Those birds aren't related to each other, but they have evolved similar bodies because they have similar problems in life. So they walk through mud or water or long grass. The neck and the long beak like a spring for stabbing, a knife on a spring to stab. You see the egret as well has the two feathers on the back of the head. That is for a breeding display. So they can tell how good a, a possible mate is, how healthy they are by the condition of their feathers. Where do birds live? I think that's what's the best thing about birds. Birds are everywhere. They are all around us. They are probably the most visible form of wildlife we have. All of your pupils know what birds are. They see them every day. They've also adapted to a wider range of habitats than any other type of animal. You get them, you get them in the Arctic and Antarctic. You get them in tropical rainforests. You get them in deserts. 
in places where other life can't survive, birds survive. They're very well adapted for, for life on Earth. So this is why you should teach your children about birds. Because it's a way for them to observe the natural world with their own eyes. And it's fascinating. You can get them to your schools with feeders. You can, you can see them very close, like this robin. This is a very popular bird in Ireland. Another thing about birds, they are at the top of the food chain. So in our bird protection organizations, as scientists, we monitor and survey bird populations because it tells us what is happening to the other plants and animals. So this bird, it's an osprey, it catches fish. If ospreys start to disappear, it might be because fish are disappearing or fish are smaller or because of water pollution affecting the fish. So we see changes in the environment through birds more easily than with other animals. And in school, your pupils can see that too, quite easily. So we'll talk more about that during the week as well. They look beautiful. Many birds are very attractive. This is a kingfisher. If you're very lucky, early in the morning, you might see them on the river in Maynooth. So with birds with bright colors and so many different patterns, for children to draw them and paint them, dress, dress as them, make, make models of them. There's so much inspiration there. So they're a great inspiration for beauty. They sound beautiful. Have you heard birds singing in the morning here? It's a nice way to wake up, right? And we find it's a great way to engage with children. When you, when, when you teach children to recognize some bird songs, to identify species, and when you do it yourselves, it's like magic. People are so impressed when you can identify birds with your ear by listening. It's quite easy, it's just practice. Uh, so that's a great way to get children involved as well. They're comical, they can look quite funny and cute. This is one of my favorites, this is a puffin. We, uh, we have these in Ireland, not in Maynooth I'm afraid, um, but on the west coast and the south coast we have many. And I think that if birds like this did not exist, we would have to invent them because they're like an advertising campaign. Everybody likes that. Birds also do weird things. These ducks in English are called red-breasted mergansers. They're a strange duck. The female is in the front. The two males are trying to impress her. So birds will do funny dances. They do funny displays. They make strange shapes. This bird also seems to have decided that teeth are a good idea again. And it, it's, it catches fish. It dives below the surface to catch fish. And very often, if, just grab, if a duck grabs fish with a beak, they slip away. This bird has the edges like a saw on its beak, pointed sharp bits for holding fish. So teeth are coming back to birds through evolution. Not only do birds do weird things, they do unbelievable things, things that seem impossible. You've all seen this bird today. This is a swift. They were in all your countries as well. They nest in the university buildings. I said earlier, the longer a bird's wings are, the more it flies in general. Look how long those wings are. This bird flies more than any other bird. In our accommodation, there are swifts in the roof. Right now, each nest has one chick in the roof. Next month, each chick will go to the edge of the nest inside the roof and fall into the air. It has never flown before. It will be confused and its instinct will tell it to open its wings. The wings will catch the air, the bird will swoop up. It will circle around and then it will go straight south to Africa. No practice, straight. 
it leaves its parents behind it. For the next two years, that bird will not land again. They fly to Africa, travel all over the south of Sahara, but they never land. They eat flies, so all the food they need is in the air. They don't need to drink water. All the water they need is inside the flies. They don't need to, to land to sleep. They fly high in the sky and go in circles. Also, we found recently, they can send one half of the brain to sleep while the other half is awake. So one eye is switched on while the other one is resting. This stuff is amazing. People don't believe it's true. You have them in your towns and villages. Children love that. Birds also do lots of really impressive things. They break lots of records. When I go to speak in schools, I always ask, what is the fastest animal in the world? And all the children say, it's the cheetah in Africa. Not even close. Cheetahs run at about 60 kilometers an hour for a short distance. This bird, the peregrine falcon, goes five times faster, 300 kilometers an hour in flight. They dive from the sky to hit birds, to kill, to kill other birds. Yesterday, there was one over the university. And I've seen some dead birds, so I think it has killed them. So when you tell children these, how birds break the records, how birds are so impressive, from a young age, it's, it, it, it's like superheroes. It's, it's like it fuels their imagination. And they, they're the gateway to a wider world of nature. This bird was my gateway. When I was two, one of these birds, in English called a pied wagtail, or white wagtail, was walking outside the window in our garden. And I was amazed by it. I wanted to go and talk to it, I wanted to feed it, I wanted to see everything it did. It would walk along, bobbing its tail all the time. And I thought this was so great. And when I was two, I asked my mother about this bird. I want to know more and more. And I kept saying, why and why and why? And still today, I say why every day about birds. It doesn't go away. And I've traveled, I've been lucky, I've traveled all over the world to see birds and to work to protect birds. But still in my own garden, I see birds all the time, and I, I ask why. Why does it do that? How did it learn to do that? What, what, what makes it do that? And if you just ask these questions, and get children to ask these questions, it makes the world a very interesting place. So quickly about beginning bird watching. We will be giving you lessons in this, so I won't go into too much detail. But start as close to home as possible. You don't have to go to strange, faraway places to see birds. They're everywhere. Even birds that are very common tell us a lot. This bird here, do we recognize it? To the Irish teachers in the back, do you recognize this bird? Yeah. It's called a chaffinch. This is the most common bird in Ireland. There are more of these in Ireland than humans. We can see them everywhere, but it's so beautiful, we can learn a lot. Learn to identify common birds. So in Ireland, this is a common bird, a goldfinch. And it's very easy to see. Red face, yellow in the wing. You'll learn some techniques this week. Then, when you learn your birds in your area, you will have, hopefully, a burning desire to travel elsewhere to see them. So you might want to go to the coast to see a bird like this. This is an eider. If you've heard of eider down, for insulation, it's from this bird. You need a good field guide. This is a very good field guide, but it's also very complicated. It's all the birds of Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. If you start with that book, maybe 90% of the birds will not be in your area, and it gets very frustrating. So use local field guides for your country or for your region. A field guide is a book that helps you to identify birds outside when watching them. Get a pair of binoculars and learn how to use them. We will give you lessons in how to use them. And while I'm on the subject of binoculars, this is important, 
Learning to use them is very important. If you remember this fellow from a few years ago. <laughs> at, at the time, it was thought he was, the, he was the worst American president possible. He seems like a genius now. Anyway, the most important thing though when watching birds is to enjoy yourself and pay attention for the next few days. We hope you'll get a lot out of it. We're going to get a lot out of it too. Uh, and I want you to go away at the end of this thinking that birds are amazing and that your children have to know about them. They just have to be taught about them. Okay? So thank you. That's all for now. Thank you.